Hello everyone, uh, I'm Amitabh Dubey. I'm the policy coordinator of the All India Professionals Congress and I'm also on the manifesto committee of the Delhi Congress for the 2020 election. Uh, much has been said by the KGWAL government about its uh, stated achievements in the realm of healthcare. So I thought it was a good opportunity for us to do a fact check and see really what has the KGWAL government been doing in healthcare. Uh, Mr. KGWAL and the AAP act as if they are the founders of modern healthcare in, in Delhi. But the fact is that they have built, whatever they have done is built on the achievement of previous governments, including the 15 years of the Sheila Dixit government in Delhi. So let's take a closer look at some of the facts. Um, the infrastructure that was inherited by the Aam Admi Party government included the following, 95 hospitals, 1,389 dispensaries, which also dispense outpatient care, 267 maternity homes, 973 polyclinics, 16 medical colleges, and more than 48,000 hospital beds. The uh, Congress government, uh, in its 15 years, built 600 dispensaries. Um, now, if we compare this with the Aam Admi Party's achievement, uh, they added, until last year, they added only 189 mohalla clinics. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal had promised 1,000, but he delivered 189. And now with the elections coming, there's been a flurry of new announcements. And so they have announced 450, not all of which are open, uh, which is still well short of the 1,000 target. So the Aam Admi Party's achievement in terms of Mohalla clinics is much less than that of the Congress Party government. And keep in mind that many of these Mohalla clinics are rebranded dispensaries from the previous era. Now, how have these Mohalla clinics been functioning? Uh, the Congress Party did a survey a couple of years ago to look at uh, exactly how effective these are, and they found the following. Um, one of the important things about a primary healthcare system is that it should have a good referral systems to secondary healthcare, to hospitals, to more specialized uh, parts of the health system. And the Mohalla clinics don't really have an institutionalized way of doing referrals. Um, many of them were in fairly random locations. Uh, the survey found that there was one in a milk dairy uh, area, there was one in a parking lot. So it seemed like the planning was not very good in terms of location. Uh, a lot of the staff of the Mohalla clinics had been transferred from dispensaries. So really that suggests that a good part of this exercise was a rebranding exercise where existing infrastructure is just given a new name, staff is transferred, and it's made to appear that a lot of new work is going on. Uh, unfortunately, it, the survey also found that many of the Mohalla clinics were being operated by, out of the premises owned by Aam Admi Party workers. So this was clearly a, a good example of patronage, that government facilities are being used to enrich and to uh, favor party workers, which really isn't how it should be happening. One important uh, part of it is that, in, in, in theory, uh, Delhi's residents have access to both medical treatment and to diagnostics through the Mohalla clinics. But to access many of these services, such as diagnostics, you need to show Delhi residents through your Aadhaar card. Um, now, the whole point in a migrant city is that you shouldn't have that because Delhi has a large Purvanchali population from UP and Bihar. Many of them may be residents of Delhi, but don't have the paperwork to show that officially. So this is a very exclusionary uh, way of providing healthcare to Delhi's residents, which wasn't the case in the previous era. So all in all, uh, Mr. Kejriwal has very effectively sold the idea of the Mohalla Clinic. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the idea of the Mohalla Clinic. But the way he, it has been implemented, compared with the achievement of previous governments, it's making it look like a huge amount of work is being done, when in fact, an incremental amount of work has been done, and much of what has been done is questionable. So that's it for the KGWAL government's claims on Mohalla clinics. Um, another area where um, the AAP government is quite lacking is in the area of hospitals. So if we look at um, the record. Firstly, let's look at uh, health spending. Um, health spending has not increased substantially compared with the previous Congress government. And in fact, there is a big problem with unallocated money. So 46% of the funds that they had allocated for health care in the Delhi budget is unspent today. This is really quite a shocking number. When it comes to hospitals, the uh, KGWAL government has proposed 
had proposed five new hospitals. What is their actual achievement? Zero new hospitals. Um, uh, they did inaugurate a new building in the Rautularam Hospital and they have uh, inaugurated, uh, they just started the construction of a hospital in Siraspur just before the elections. So once again, if you just compare the Sheila Dixit government, the previous Congress government's very solid record when it comes to hospitals with the Aam Aadmi Party's announcements that haven't been delivered into concrete results, it's a sorry picture. Uh, let me give you an example of um, uh, the non-serious approach. Um, the Delhi State Cancer Hospital in Dilshad Garden has seen a big spike in deaths uh, of its patients. Uh, during the last five years, about 7,800 patients died, compared with less than 2,500 in the previous five years during the Congress government. Uh, what, what are the contributing factors? One is that the number of appointments, the number of empty positions in these hospitals is very high. So only 180, in fact, 187 out of 283 doctor positions are vacant in this particular hospital. So how can you deliver the care that patients need? Let's take a look at the Rajiv Gandhi Super Specialty Hospital. Um, this, is, uh, this hospital has 820 posts, of which 493 are vacant. So once again, you have a very valuable health asset that could be delivering excellent services, but because the government, the state government hasn't made the necessary appointments, it is not being able to function effectively. So this is um, an example of how the uh, KGL government makes very big claims on its actions in the healthcare sector, but in reality, there are severe lacunae and severe problems with implementation. Now, as most of you are aware, Delhi has a serious health uh, em emergency when it comes to air pollution. Um, there are uh, 27 deaths every day in Delhi uh, from respiratory diseases, of which much of it is caused by air pollution. This number of, uh, has jumped up by two-thirds in the last two or three years, from 2014 to 2016, in fact, to be precise. Uh, so clearly we all know that this is a huge issue. Um, what can the Delhi government specifically do with air pollution? Now, air pollution is a multifaceted uh, problem. There are, you know, national policies are relevant, neighboring states are important, but that doesn't mean that the Delhi state government has no role. The way in which the Delhi government, the main way in which the Delhi government can impact air pollution is by reducing vehicle and dust emissions. One of the biggest causes of vehicle emissions is of course private vehicles. So the answer very clearly is to invest in public transport and to make sure that people who today use private transport because of their compulsion, because the system isn't good enough uh, to get them where they want uh, in, at the right price and in the right time, uh, that it does that. Um, however, when it comes to public transport, the Aam Aadmi Party government has again been very lackadaisical. Let's look at some numbers. Um, uh, the Supreme Court has said that Delhi needs 11,000 buses. Delhi has about 5,500 buses, so we're still very short. Uh, the cluster bus system of the previous Congress government added quite a lot of buses to the streets. But since the Aam Aadmi Party government came in, there's been very lackadaisical action. Um, they have not really been able to order the number of buses and just before the elections, under the pressure of the ju judiciary, they managed to place some orders and something like a hundred new buses have come in. Um, so this is clearly shows that there was a lack of planning and that only under extreme duress are these, is this government acting to uh, build public transport. Um, if you look at clean fuel, uh, the uh, Congress government, previous Congress government, added 6,200 CNG buses. Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party government has added, I believe the number is 11. So that tells you that they have not really approached this uh, very severe problem with any seriously inst seriousness. Instead, we have stunts like odd even, which make for great headlines, but have no discernible impact on air pollution. Um, let's look at, uh, uh, if you look at the budgets, let's just look at how much money was spent on public transport. Um, the Congress government's funding rose eightfold compared with the uh, BJP government in the 90s uh, to 4,300 crores in 2013-14. ARP spending has languished and in fact is down 7.5% in comparison. So the ARP government is not even spending on public transport as, it, as, it, as the Delhi's voters believe it should and it needs to to take care of the emissions problem. Um, if you look at the road network, 
the Congress government added more than 5,000 kilometers of roads in Delhi. That's a huge number. Uh, Aam Aadmi Party has added practically nothing. So clearly, if you look at the record of the previous government, and you look at the record of the Aam Aadmi Party, and you strip away all the claims and propaganda, it's very clear that the AAP government has failed the residents of Delhi. Um, what about the metro? Um, phase 3 of the Delhi metro is delayed by 3 years. Phase 4 is delayed by 5 years. And if you remember, the Congress government in 10 years raised metro fares once, which uh, allowed a lot of people who could not afford um, private transport to use the public transport. And it made it economical for them to do so. Uh, the AAP and the BJP together have raised metro fares twice in one year. So that just tells you um, this, the priorities that they, uh, they have when it comes to public transport. Um, let's uh, look now um, at uh, all right so, so so let me just just uh, encapsulate what we've said. Um, the Aam Aadmi Party government has made very strong claims about Mohalla clinics, um, but its actual delivery on the ground is quite weak compared with previous governments. They have failed to invest in hospitals. They have failed to invest in public transport. And they have failed to essentially invest in all the things that allowed the Sheila Dixit government to make Delhi such a big success. Um, their claims, their, we all know that their publicity budgets are at a record high. Well, while their spending on actual infrastructure and actual healthcare is lower than the previous times. So like the Modi government, the Kejival government has mastered the art of selling and not quite figured out how to produce, uh, something that Congress governments have traditionally been much better at. So let me leave it at that and we will now take some questions. Um, let's take a look. First question is from Divyansh. Will Congress give importance to Mohalla clinics as that were introduced by the Aam Aadmi Party? Well, absolutely. Uh, the, it's clear that the Mohalla clinic is an evolution of dispensaries and the system set up by the Congress. And the Congress will absolutely continue uh, to develop this system. Uh, there's still some weaknesses uh, that need to be fixed. For instance, a large amount of the demand for uh, primary health care services is from pregnant women, from young mothers. And there really aren't enough facilities for them. So the first thing Congress will do is um, invest in that area and make sure that young mothers, pregnant women, get all the services they need. We will also increase the linkages between the Mohalla clinics and dispensaries and labs and the secondary healthcare system to make a smooth process of referral rather than having them exist in a silo separate from the broader healthcare system. Uh, we will increase the working hours of the Mohalla clinics and very importantly because of uh, we've seen a lot of abuses of the system whether it is uh, you know uh, supporting financially uh, Aam Aadmi Party workers or, or, or whatever they may be and we will do a social audit of the Mohalla clinics to make sure that they are functioning as they should. So that's uh, the Congress Party's uh, stance on Mohalla clinics. Uh, next question. You claim that AAP didn't build, next question from Sandeep. Uh, you say that AAP didn't build any hospitals. How many did the Congress build? Do you think that the number of beds in hospitals in ratio to the population is enough? If not, what is your proposal? Well, the answer is very clear. The Congress party built 28 hospitals um, in its tenure. Aam Aadmi Party has built zero so far. Um, the Congress party added more than 20,000 beds uh, to hospitals in its tenure. The Aam Aadmi Party has added about 394. So it's very clear that uh, there's much more uh, that needs to be done. And the Congress party will continue to add beds to existing hospitals. And will you are uh, our manifesto will be coming out soon, and all the details will be there. Uh, but we will definitely have a vigorous hospital building program. Um, next question is from Dhruv. What will Congress do to tackle deaths due to respiratory problems? Well, 
Uh, apart from investing in the healthcare system, uh, the most important thing that any state government can do is invest in public transport to reduce emissions and therefore to help uh, the qual uh, air quality and reduce respiratory problems. You will recall that the, it was the Congress government that managed and supervised the transition from diesel to CNG under the previous Sheila Dixit government. The Congress will, and the details will be in the manifesto when it comes out, and I urge you to look at that for more information, will manage the transition from CNG to electric. Uh, around the world, electric, uh, electric buses are the core of modern transport, and the Congress party will make sure that there is a big initiative to manage the transition from CNG to electric. Uh, Congress party will also uh, support national policies to uh, make this transition occur from in the domain of private vehicles. But as a state government, the most important thing it can do is to build large numbers of electric buses and deploy them on the roads. And that is what the Congress party will do. Um, another question from Abdul. Currently, ambulances take too long to reach hospitals, leading to deaths which could be avoided. What is a way to ensure speedy arrival of ambulances? Well, it's a good question. Um, the sad reality is that more than 100 of the, I'll just check the number, 110 out of 265 CATS ambulances in Delhi are inadequately equipped. So obviously the first thing is to do is to bring all of those um, ambulances up to standard. Um, about 45 of them are unoperational at any given point. So the idea is we will strive to minimize the number of uh, ambulances that are um, inoperational for whatever reason. The other thing, and again, details will be in the manifesto, which is still under preparation. But broadly, the idea is that like in Karnataka, um, motorcycle ambulances can be deployed for areas that are very difficult to reach, crowded areas, densely populated areas, where normal ambulances find it difficult to access in a timely manner. So one of the ideas we will possibly um, push for is the motorcycle ambulance that will bring these services to a much larger number of people. All right. So here's an interesting question. It's not quite in the realm of healthcare. Gaurav, what are your views on the apparent silence of Delhi CM and AAP about the brutal, brutal crackdown by the police in Jamia, the attack on GNU and CAA NRC? Well, Gaurav, uh, good question, although not quite in the uh, area of health policy. But it is true. I think voters of Delhi have noticed the silence of Arvind Kejriwal on an issue that affects thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands of Delhi res residents, and uh, many of them are fearful of. And yet he has maintained a complete silence on the issue. And unlike many Congress leaders, he has failed to visit the protesting students in either Jamia or GNU and is playing a political game, uh, trying to uh, not get involved uh, with taking a position on an issue that means so much to the residents of Delhi. The fact of the matter is that the NRC in particular um, is a disaster waiting to happen, and Mr. Kejriwal needs to uh, vigorously oppose um, uh, all of these central government policies, just like the Congress party is doing. The NRC was a disaster in Assam. It inconvenienced millions of people and it, uh, by all accounts, it has failed to tackle the problem it was set up to tackle and has instead found, you know, people like Indian Army uh, officers, people who have given their lives to this country, people in the government um, who are clearly local residents <coughs> have suddenly found themselves off the National Register of Citizens and having to go through the uh, huge problem of trying to prove that they are genuine citizens. We cannot let the central government do this to the rest of the country. It'll be like another note bandi. Um, it'll inconvenience everyone. Everyone will have to pay a huge cost, both um, in time and financially trying to get their papers. Um, and they will be at the mercy of the bureaucracy um, in doing so. And the net result, like note bandi, will probably be disastrous anyway. So I think it is incumbent on the Kejriwal government to do what the Congress has done, which is to take a stand in support of students, in support of protesters, and to stand up for the rights of the people of Delhi, which so far they have not done. All right. Thanks very much for, um, if there are no more questions. So thanks for joining us in this session. 
Now, as I mentioned, the Delhi Manifesto is still under preparation. We actually have a website where we invite suggestions from people like you. It's called dillikibath.com. And we also have uh, a WhatsApp number, which I shall, um, which we will put in the comments below this. Uh, but let me tell you, the WhatsApp number, if you want to send suggestions for the manifesto, is 96257-77907. Uh, if you prefer, you can do a missed call. The missed call number is 1-800-121-555-558. And there's an email address, manifesto at dillikibath.com. So we, we will put these details in the comments below. And we invite you to send in any suggestions that you might have. Thank you for taking part in this conversation. Vote Congress.